Okay, so we have a new episode of Legends and Leaders, and today it's great to have Max here. Max, you're behind a company called Superpower, which is supposed to give you, you know, superpowers in your life, make you healthier, feel better, understand how your body and your system works. And you've got a, an interesting subscription model and a whole system that you developed here to help people with their lives and to understand what's really going on, um, you know, with them and with their systems. So I'm excited to have you here and to get into your story. Excited to be here, Ben. Awesome. So Max, just kind of going back to the beginning, like how did your interest in entrepreneurship and like kind of health and wellness in that space begin? Was this something you were always passionate about? Did you have your own health journey beforehand? What led to this journey you're on now? I was starting all sorts of companies from when I was a little kid. Um, my first was a Minecraft server of all things. I used to pay people to access, a mi charge people to access a, a Minecraft server and they would pay me to access perks like slash fly then i would sell all sorts of random things on the playground at school um drop mainly dropped ship things from alibaba um everyone thought it was amazing back then alibaba was unknown the idea that you could access these products that everyone wanted at good prices was unknown i think i was buying products for like 10 cents and selling them for ten dollars and no one had any idea and, and that, that was like playground businesses and, and then i continued to start all sorts of all sorts of different things uh so i i, I think for a lot of my life I, I thought about okay what are what are companies i can start what are problems i can see and solve um, at the same time, um, during this period, uh, I, I went through basically from age eight to 18, I went through a long period of misdiagnosis. Mm. I had chronic migraines, chronic sinusitis. So it would take me three hours to get to sleep every night. I had surgery, was told to medicate for life and no one knew what was going wrong, going on. And I ended up as you do becoming a health geek, trying to just fix myself, right? I would try literally everything under the sun. Um, some of the things I tried were comical and crazy, but, um, when you, can't sleep at night and you, you like feel sick half the time you, you really want things to change and i ended up getting to the bottom of what was going on by finding someone i call a 10x doctor and they made me realize there's a big gap between the, the best of healthcare the kind of healthcare jeff bezos might have and what most people have access to and i've believed that for as long as that gap exists someone or some company has to come along and close it and the only way to close the gap was going to be through technology not humans, not more doctors. And that was the impetus for superpower. Um, we started around the same time as the large language models came out because I saw an opportunity to close that gap um, by, and give everyone access to the best of healthcare using technology. So what did superpower start as? What was the initial thinking? What, say that again? What was the initial idea for superpower? Like, What were you going to try to build that was going to help people? I... Well, started with the idea of how do we build a new healthcare system? Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to start with a big grand long-term vision mm -hmm. and then reason backwards from that. And, uh, the, the, that was the big grand long-term vision. And, and I believe that fundamentally that would have to be driven by an AI doctor that knew everything about you and everything about medicine and can connect the dots to, to find out one, exactly what's going on and two, exactly what you can do about it. And then there's a question of where do we start? What's the starting point today? What, what's, yes, that's step 10 or 100, but what's step one? And initially we were like, well, let's start with high-end concierge medicine and then slowly bring the price down and democratize that. And then we realized, hold up, when you start a high price, you start making decisions for the high price model and it's hard to bring the price down. So instead, let's start with a low price membership uh, that is really valuable, uh, starting with a 100 plus blood biomarker testing twice a year. Um, and then let's just keep adding to that membership over time. Um, we keep adding and adding similar to Amazon prime, right? That like started kind of good and they added so much that every single person had to own the membership. And now it's the way people shop. I think that's analogous to what we're doing. Um, start with a membership that's inherently valuable to a subset of people and just keep adding and adding until it's so valuable that every single person has to own the membership. So the membership idea, like what did it entail initially? Because like now it's pretty robust in, in terms of what you have. Like what, what were you thinking was the base level you could offer for this membership? Uh, well, initially it was, it was a $10,000 high-end concierge medicine experience, which was full stack everything, all diagnostics, all care, et cetera. Now it's a $499 membership that provides honestly most of that same 10K value at $499 includes twice annual blood biomarker testing, 100 plus blood biomarkers will assess, 
We'll ask someone to get additional testing as well. Gut microbiome, toxins, cancer screening. We'll connect the dots across all of this data alongside all of your past medical records, your personal history, family history, and wearable data. And we'll say, here's exactly what's going on at the root cause. And then we make it easy for someone to take action. So we have this ecosystem um, that you get as part of the membership. You get 20% off every diagnostic supplement pharmaceutical, and then you have access to a medical team and an AI. So you can text the AI or you can text your medical team um, that perform doctor-like um, functions. And that is, that's the 499 membership. Testing, connecting the dots, and then the, the ecosystem to allow you to take action. So, so you built this AI from scratch, Max? Uh, we or sit on top of foundation models. We don't, we don't own GPUs and, and train our own models. Mm-hmm. And how did you kind of think about like building the AI and like, you know, kind of just coming about with how it functions and everything? Cause you mentioned you were kind of creating the company at the same time when, when AI, modern AI of what we're talking about today was even just emerging. Um, we, in the early days, we were like, when I was exploring this pre, um, chat GBT, I was looking at all sorts of different modalities, um, knowledge graphs, large vector databases, ways to perform inference on top of them. The magic now is language models do a lot of the heavy lifting. And the -hmm. question is, what is the support we need to provide uh, on top of or around language models? And that is data aggregation, right? We need to get as maximum context on the person possible, pull in someone's past medical records, um, upload labs, facilitate new testing. We need medical knowledge aggregation. Right? We need to capture the latent knowledge in the brains of doctors that's not on the internet and not in ChatGPT. And then, then we need the system of action. Um, ChatGPT cannot prescribe, it can't diagnose, it can't order new products, it can't refer out. We need to build that as well around the AI. So large language models do a lot of the heavy lifting and then we support it with data, medical knowledge, and the system of action. Yeah. I mean, it's a fascinating model. It's really comprehensive. Do you see this replacing the Dr. Max or is this something that works alongside the typical kind of doctor setup people have? Uh, yeah, in time, uh, it will replace a lot of the functions that a primary care doctor does. Um, and then there'll be some functions that are still distinctly human. And for those, we will refer out. Mm-hmm. Do you think you're going to need like an in-person like option, like kind of having your own in-person setup you know, to, to help people? Or is it, is it just going to be online kind of going forward? Uh, no, no plans to do so anytime soon. We don't need it at the moment because everything can be done from home. If something is required in person, we'll just partner with an in-person facility. Mm-hmm. And so you're able to create these like personalized plans for people of everything that they need just from kind of understanding them and who they are. Does it take a long time to build the customer profile and to, and to you know, understand what they're up to and what they have? Uh, not really. Yeah. Like... We get a lot of medical records from people. They give us a lot of information during the survey. After you see 100 plus blood biomarkers, you can get a pretty good sense of what's going wrong. And then a lot of people choose to add on other testing, like they got microbiome or toxin testing or cancer screening. And that gives us even more data. Um, and then they, they tell us how they're feeling and how they're going. So all of that tends to mean that um, it's we're able to get a com- quite complete and comprehensive picture of someone's health very early on. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's amazing. So you're able to not only diagnose and kind of understand, but you can predict too. You can do both. Uh, yeah. Like look, pr- we still have some way to go with prediction. Um, mm-hmm. but what we're trying to do is one, get to the root cause, see at the root, what is resulting in the, the problems we see today in your data or that you report on. Mm-hmm. And then in time, how does the aggregate of all of this data allow us to predict in a way that, that humans can't and health systems can't, Mm-hmm. And, and do you think that by having like a subscription, you know, service and, and having people really committed to their health like this, like um, that's going to, you know, improve health in general because of the level of commitment there is today um, and the kind of, you know, like the time they need to put towards something like this. And is, do you think that's something that will really, you know, make people healthier as well? Gosh, it's my, it's my hope on this is part of why, <laughs> why we're here and why, why we're doing this. Um, yeah. I think the reality is that, if you equip people with data, access, information, if you reduce prices, if you build an interconnected ecosystem, if you create culture and uh, and create a culture that supports healthy living and make that thing that people look up to and idolize, the idea is you start to drive health outcomes, right? If you can get to the root of what's going on, if you can recommend exactly what someone should do, the idea is you start driving health outcomes. Again, like I, I got into this because I had problems that were not being solved by dozens of doctors 
and it seeded this belief that something has to change and with more knowledge and more information and more data, we can actually drive better outcomes. So yes, like we, we do that a little bit today. I think we still have a long way to go in terms of driving outcomes, but uh, where we want to get to is that uh, someone, a member of superpower is far healthier than, than uh, someone who has never come across or, or used superpower. So why did you name it superpower? I mean, I get kind of the meaning. Maybe you just want to expand on it a bit more. And like, also, how did you get the domain? It's a great domain to have. Um, the domain was a fluke. We got it for a really good price. We're offered almost 20 times more just a few months later. And the naming, the, the, the fundamental idea is like, how can health feel more like a, more like a Nike or an Apple, mm -hmm. something aspirational rather than like your old stodgy health system. And the idea is that health shouldn't just be about treating sickness. It should be about empowering people to reach their peak potential. Uh, in other words, we can give people superpowers like health should be a superpower, right? If you superpower your health, you superpower your life. So a lot of those core beliefs, um, seeded, uh, seeded the name and the visual identity and the brand and then the broader website. Yeah. I mean, you guys have a really great visual identity. I mean, the, the website's stunning. Um, you know, it feels like something you want to be a part of that you want to gravitate towards in the same way you want to put on a Nike shoe or you want to get an Apple product. So I definitely get that. I mean, what was your thinking behind how to develop the system, how to make the whole experience feel premium and, you know, feel like something you want to do? Like, how did you kind of think about that from a design standpoint? Um, I think it starts with like the emotions we want to drive. Mm -hmm. I think like it starts with one, what do we believe? And two is as a derivative of what we believe, what are the emotions we want people to feel? And when you start with that, you realize, oh, okay, we can't really be blue and pastel like every other health company. Let's do orange. Let's be distinctive. Let's be aspirational. Let's be scientific. Um, let's use language that other health companies don't use. Part of it is also just deciding to say, we are going to take a little bit longer to ship something really beautiful and really good. And I think aesthetic vision often starts with, with founders and people saying, Let, let's have an aesthetic vision. And that comes together in, in creating a visual identity along the lines of, of what we have, which I think is like, okay, we need to put more work into it. But I think compared to a lot of health companies, we're doing reasonably well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly a very different approach. And when you look at it right away, you're like, you know, you don't even think it's a health company necessarily. You know, it's like, what kind of company even is it? Because it, it fits in line with like kind of some of these trendy consumer brands, but it's, you know, it's, it's a very different approach. So I, I like the approach you're taking. I think it's, I think it's what's needed today, especially to attract younger people too. There's a lot of young people that need to get into fitness, need to get into taking care of their health right away. And if they don't have something trendy. They may not do it. Yes. Um, uh, 100%. I think, um, we want to define culture, right? Like there's no one walking around wearing one medical t-shirts or, or hymns t-shirts. Um, there's no real like love for any brand in, in healthcare. There's no, there's no cult like following. Um, and I think often those things start with slightly like younger demographics. I think culture is often defined by slightly younger demographics as well. And then it permeates, right? Then, it, then, it, then it reaches the mainstream. Um, but it starts with, with tastemakers and, uh, the Apple version of this was we, we are for the creatives, the misfits and the rebels, the square pegs and round holes. And the, the Nike version is where, where, where for the athletes, right? Where for the people who push the limits of human potential. Um, and I think uh, the superpower is a similar sentiment, which is where for people who, who care about health, where for people who want peak health, um, uh, where for people who want health intelligence and to be in control of their health. And that, that's the starting point to seed what hopefully is, is a far greater brand. Yeah, I, it's a great mission. Um, can you talk a bit about like kind of the fundraising side of things and like how you've kind of put that together and how you got the company even started initially? Like, did you have to bootstrap it to get it going? And when did you decide to bring on kind of other investors? Yeah, we're, we're being fortunate that at every stage of fundraising, investors have wanted to invest um, at the, the pre-seed at the seed at the Series A, which was preempted. I think that partially comes down to the fact that we're, we've gotten quite good at storytelling. I think we have an amazing team. I think the category is now in Zeitgeist. Um, and there's a belief that there's going to be a trillion dollar health company. Like that's a belief that most people have. And the question is, what's the critical path there? Um, and then I think that we have on the, the product and brand side executed quite well to date and, and, uh, investors maybe extrapolate that, that curve.
Yeah. And so, so you got it started, you did like an initial funding to get, get it off the ground basically, or was it like you just kind of building this up and you're like yourself? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, uh, me and my co-founders were in, independently building companies and then we joined forces and we, in, in, we independently raised money as well. Um, uh, just about right from the start. Very nice. So how many years has this journey been so far? We're around two years in so far. Wow. You've accomplished a lot in two years. It's amazing. I don't know, man. I like, I sit there being like, holy shit, we could have done all of this in six months. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think that, uh, everything's relative and it's always possible to move far faster and look, knowing what I know now, um, starting the company again, I think we could be ahead of where we are now in, in 12 months. Yeah. So, so what is like the roadmap look like today? Like, what, like what is the couple of year plan? Just the short-term goals, long-term goals. What are the most active things you're focusing on? We want to be the first place people turn to for their health. Mm -hmm. So the question is how, how do we do that? How do we become a membership that most people want to own? And that's partially shipping certain features. How do people interact with the AI more? How does we have even more data on someone? How is the AI far better than ChatGPT? How can we facilitate full stack healthcare and bring more and more of the functions of primary care into superpower? And if we do all of those things, we think we we now at the front door. And we think that a lot of people will come back to us first before going to Google ChatGPT or their primary care doctor. And for us, if we're the front door, we're in a really, really privileged position because it gives us optionality to do um, all sorts of things. Yeah. I mean, I just, I just like kind of thinking about like the math, like, like how does it work out for the $500 a year compared to what you would spend, you know, with a doctor, and especially like taking into account, like people don't really think about, you know, preemptive, like you know, preventing some of these things before and being prepared beforehand. Like how, like what, it, like how, how does it come out cost wise compared to what you would spend traditionally? Plus, you know, all the stuff that you're preventing, like, is it much, is it, is there a ton of savings there? Cause it seems like $500 sounds like a lot, but it, it probably isn't in the scheme of things. Yeah, if someone was trying to get all of these things separately, it's going to cost them way more. Both of the blood tests are each going to cost between 500 and 5,000, depending on where you get them, if you got them independently. Mm -hmm. um, access to your medical team costs money. Um, no one's giving you 20% off supplements and pharmaceuticals, right? That That's valuable. A lot of people might pay subscriptions for apps that pull all of their data into one place. We'll do that as well. Um, so like $500, $499 is 42 a month. You gotta remember, people are paying like like five to fifteen thousand dollars a year for insurance. Right. right? That, that's how this is. This is four ninety nine. It's it's a small addition on on top of that. And, and I mean, eventually, do you see yourself getting into insurance or anything like that? Because I would think this it could be this ecosystem if they're going to come to you anyways for treatment and stuff. Like, might as well build that out too. No, no plans to insurance is too much about how you game the system, and I don't want to play games that are about gaming i want to play games that are about delivering great customer experiences and solving problems okay makes sense yeah um do you have like any just kind of like interesting testimonials or stuff like that people have told you of their experience using superpower like something that stood out to you as a founder that you know really kind of touched you um yeah we the, the ones that i i always um love are the ones which are like I've seen five doctors about this problem and you provided insights that I never realized. And I think they're right. And I'm about to change things or the one we get all the time is oh, I discovered prediabetes and I didn't know it. I discovered I had um, really low testosterone and now I fixed that naturally. And I feel so much more alive. I feel so much better. Or I discovered I had mercury toxicity and that could have caused a neurological condition in several years time. Wow. And discovering that was, was game changing for me. So there are a few of the things that, that come up often. Yeah. I mean, that's a big deal. Some of those you just mentioned. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Max, I mean, that was all the questions that I had. I appreciate you taking the time and doing this. Um, I think what you guys are building is, is really exciting. It's something different. Um, and I like the, the, the thinking behind and the approach of like how this should be preemptive and this should be something that's cool that everyone gravitates towards. I mean, you look at some other fitness brands, like for example, Iron Man, you know, people get that tattooed on them. That's simple. It has become culturally cool to be part of, of that um, you know, area and to push yourself physically. And it, the same thing should apply towards health. And so it's, it's a really good mission. It's exciting. And I just look forward to see where you're taking it next. I appreciate you doing this. 
Thank you, man. Um, we, we have three team members with superpower tattoos and counting. So um, <laughs> I, I, I love the Iron Man analogy.